Paradigma pendidikan kami adalah memberi peluang bagi yang ingin berusaha untuk maju dan meraih kemandirian dengan penguasaan ilmu dan teknologi secara kreatif, inovatif, dinamis, dan beralaku karina. Kami menjadi sebuah universitas yang unggul dalam pengembangan ilmu dan teknologi dengan berlandaskan nilai-nilai Islam untuk kemaslahatan umat. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Good afternoon, greetings to all of us. First of all, let's praise and thanks to all thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the abundance of grace and the joy of us because we can still join here to learn from extraordinary speakers. Let's start yes even by saying personalah. Dear Dr. Ramsa Mohsa, as the presenter for today, we'll deliver material on sustainable agriculture for future generation. And Dr. Farida Yahya, as the presenter for today, will deliver material on sensory evaluation and consumer acceptability of food. And the all participation will, will have been present in the in this occasion. The theme of this summer school is bring agriculture to the next level. And before starting the event, please let me introduce myself. My name is Musulianor Aini as a master of ceremony for this afternoon. And please let me confess our agenda. First, presentation from lecture, second discussion, and the last is announcement, assessment, and closing. The attendance Thanks will be taken from a station. Before starting the first event, I will inform you of the rules in the summer school 2021. One, all participation can start being occasion the new application at half past 11, 12 p.m. via the link the participant has received. Participation has to join in the Zoom application 30 minutes before the program started. Two, please enter the summer school program by reminding yourself and your intrinsic in institution with the format in in institution name and full name. Three, all participation are requested to turn on the video during opening until closing session. Four, when the speaker conveys the material, your microphone in the Zoom application shall be deactivated or mode, and it will be fully controlled by the host and co-host. Five, during the program, the participants do not allow to share any files in the Zoom application or share screen. See, at the question and answer or Q&A session, if you would like to ask a question, please use the Face hand feature in the application in the Zoom application, then you can ask the patient after moderator allows it. Seven, all participants are expected to participate in the summer school program in an orderly manner until it was finished. And last, if you have any trouble with the network, you can participate through YouTube Prodi Agribusiness UMB. And reminding the participation of summer school 2021, in this activity, there will be assessment of the active participant. We hope all of the participation can be active. Next, entering the main event, as the master of ceremony, I will let this event to the moderator, namely Mr. Yehud Razaki, with honor, I give Mr. Zaki to take this event. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you, Bu. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thanks to Allah for uh, his mercy and his blessing so we can uh, attend our second day of summer school on tropical agribusiness and then uh, today uh, we will have two uh, speakers come from uh, UMT University of Malaysia Terengganu and then uh, after we hear the presentation from uh, two lecturers uh, we will have discussion like uh, yesterday. We hope that today's discussion will be more uh, lively. Yeah, uh, More students will uh, give their opinion or maybe give their talks uh, about uh, today's uh, topic. 
Yeah. Uh, first lecture or first speaker today uh, will be uh, Dr. Ramisa Moksha. Uh, she will bring the topic sustainable agriculture for future generation. So why we are talking about sustainable agriculture? Because if we only uh, think about how we can produce the uh, crops uh, as high as we want, or how we can uh, get more income through the agriculture, if we only think about that, the results will be not good. Yeah, There is a some side effect when we exploit the agriculture or natural resources. So we should, uh, we have to think about how we can uh, utilize the agriculture with sustainable thinking. Yeah, We can do the sustainable agriculture. Therefore, uh, today we will take the topic about sustainable agriculture, especially for the young generation, because uh, this summer school, uh, almost all of uh, the all participants are young uh, participants. So we hope that through this uh, topic, uh, the awareness about sustainable agriculture will increase and uh, give more benefits for the uh, future agriculture. And then the next uh, presenter or lecture or uh, speaker today is uh, Dr. Faridah Yahya. Uh, she is also from uh, UMT, University of Malaysia Terengganu. And I, I think the topic that will be delivered by Dr. Farida is not a far topic from uh, Dr. Ramisah will talk about, which is about the food. Yeah, food is become the uh, main uh, human needs. Yeah, uh, when people don't eat, they will uh, die. Something like that. So this food is uh, really close to the agriculture issue. And then uh, how people respond or how people choose their food, I think it is a good or uh, interesting issue or interesting topic that we can talk about. So Dr. Farida Yahya will talk about uh, sensory evaluation and consumer acceptability of food. So I think these two topics uh, will bring us uh, more knowledge uh, regarding agriculture, especially for the uh, young generation. Okay, before I start, I would I would like to greet uh, our two speakers. First is Dr. Ramisa. Hello, Dr. Ramisa. Hello, Dr. Uh, how how are you, Dr. I'm good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope that uh, the COVID situation in Malaysia will getting better. Yeah, Dok. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. At the moment, we still in the lockdown situation can it's you because, hear me yes yes we can hear you Doc, yeah yeah so yeah it's uh, the numbers of the the covid positive still high so yesterday is about six thousand something oh yeah so uh yeah we, we cannot we cannot move to the to the second phase so we're still in the lockdown situation yeah so in Malaysia is total lockdown. Yes, total lockdown at the moment. Yes. Uh, how about the vital, vital facilities such as bank or maybe supermarket still open? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. The 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 essential uh, facilities like uh, bank, like hospital, like supermarket, uh, they, they still open. The, the restaurant uh, still open, but we cannot dine in. How how if you want to go to the bank? How we, we you you want to go to the supermarket? Is there any uh, guard or police that will stop and check you? Uh, normally, yeah. D during the lockdown, we cannot go out out uh, about uh, more than we cannot go more than I think about twenty kilometers from your house. Ah, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, so if there is, yeah, there are banks or uh, supermarket nearby, so you can just go there. I see, I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Because in Indonesia, the condition of COVID pandemic is uh, quite uh, worse. So uh -huh. the, yeah, 
the infected people are increasing because the delta variant. Yeah. Uh, some yeah. some experts say uh, delta variant due yeah. to the delta variant. Yeah. So my my colleague also uh, get infected. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Dr. Triono, uh, he got infected by this virus. I hope, I hope he will getting better. Yeah. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, we hope. We hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, the, the virus not very harsh. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Ramisa. Next, uh, Dr. Farida still not join yet. Yeah, Bu. Uh, yeah, not yet. Okay. Okay. Said, yeah, two thirty. Yes. Well, we are waiting Dr. Farida because Dr. Farida has another uh, business. Uh, he will uh, do the business and then after that join this meeting. So we will give a chance to Dr. Amisa to present uh, her presentation. Doctor, please, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zuhud, as a moderator. Is it I share the screen or you can share the screen or what? So how are we going to do this? I, I'm sharing the screen. screen? Yes. If, okay. if that uh, you think better, uh, please do that. Yes, Dr. yes. I will try. Yeah. So can you see my slides? Uh, still process. Okay, Doc. Okay. Is it in the slideshow mode or still in this? Not slideshow yet, Doc. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, already. Thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and good day, everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. First of all, I would like to, to thank uh, to the organizer of Summer School on Tropical Agribusiness, eh, Department of Agribusiness, Universitas Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta, for giving me the opportunity uh, uh, to talk eh, during the... Uh, during the the summer course program, so so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. Actually, yeah. Just what uh, Dr. Zuhud uh, said uh, yesterday. Yeah, mentioned yesterday that our relationship yeah, uh, between UMT and also Universitas Muhammadiyah has been uh, working since last year. Yeah, we sending our students. Uh, to the summer school and we continue to do that this year. So actually, we we planning to do to to, to have uh, one summer school in UMP, especially in our faculty. But due to the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, yeah, uh, yeah, we have to put back on hold. So hopefully next year you can do, you can you can plan uh, one and hopefully yeah, uh, you can send. your students to, to, to our program. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. so actually today, thank you. So today actually is a very special day. Yeah, uh, today is the the 20 years of UMP establishment. So we have one, uh, one whole day program actually still running up to this to this evening. Yeah, we have several talks yeah, from, from the previous uh, vice chancellor and also from the previous uh, uh, I mean administrator. Yeah. So yeah, actually today is very, very special day. So yeah, they, they just organized the, uh, the program today. Okay. So sorry, I have to wear masks because I'm in the office uh, today uh, because my my House, yeah, my home uh, internet connection is not very good. So I have to come to the office and hopefully the, the, the internet connection in the office is good and we can continue the course. Okay. So again, yeah, I'm, I, I am Dr. Ramisa uh, Mahomaj. Yeah, I'm from a crop science program, yeah, faculty of uh, fisheries and food science. Uh, PSM is actually stand to, uh, yeah, in Malay, yeah, Faculty Perikanan dan Sains Makanan, actually. Okay, so in English is Faculty of Fisheries and Food Science. So we have one crop science program in the faculty. Uh, so this is my contact number, so my email and also my my 
my mobile number. So anytime if you want to contact me, please, uh, yeah, you can email or you can just uh, WhatsApp me. Okay. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to introduce, yeah, especially to the participants from Indonesia, from other other countries, yeah. Uh, uh, who is you see Malaysia Terengganu? It's about it's only uh, about three, three and a half minutes uh, video. So hopefully uh, the moderator Dr. Zuhud can play the video for me. Yes, Bu, I will play. I will okay. stop your sharing first. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Yes, Bu, please share your slide again. I also, I'm sorry, Bu, I'm wearing mask because I also in office. Yeah, 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 it's okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> it's just the, the, the SOP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's okay. So yeah, that is yeah actually the UMT a brief about UMT. So we actually very small university compared to universitas at uh, universitas Muhammadiyah. Uh, yeah, at the moment we only have about five faculties. Uh, including our faculty, faculty of fisheries and food science. Don't go, don't please don't get confused with the the name. Yeah, we are crop science under the uh, faculty of fisheries and food science because we are under the the team of food science. So at the moment, at the our faculty we have about five undergraduate uh, programs. Yeah, fisheries, aquaculture, food science, food technology, and also the crop science. So yeah, uh, compared to compared to University of Muhammadiyah, I guess we are we are very small. Yeah, yeah. I would love to go to to uh, UMI, UMI yeah, one day. Yeah, inshallah one day. Okay. So that is about UMP. So we maybe maybe our UMP students here familiar with the videos. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's yeah go into the course outlines. Um, just to remind you, yeah, just to remind you. Um, actually, I'm not the expert of sustainable agriculture field. Yeah, my my field is more about the the crop agronomy and also the plant genetic resources. Yeah, I'm doing more. Uh, then, uh, yeah, more more research and study about the the um, agronomy part of the crops yeah, and also the diversity of the different uh, or indigenous uh, crops uh, can yeah been been found in in Malaysia. But uh, I guess the the title today I think is quite relevant. Yeah, and also might be inspired yeah, our young generation that uh, participates yeah, in this in this uh, summer school programs. Okay, so this is the course synopsis. I guess uh, uh, what Dr. Zuhud or moderator said just now is is uh, is about it. Yeah, so so we want the sustainable uh, agriculture. Yeah? without harming the, the living things yeah? and also we can get uh, uh, optimal optimum yield yeah? and also we also hope the future generation will take um, the opportunity yeah? to grow in their development and also uh, do not forget the other factors uh, uh, in, in that give impact to the agriculture okay so this is the outline so we we going to have about four four parts today. But don't worry, it's not very long. Yeah, so I'm going to share with you yeah, some some uh, ideas, yeah, some ideas, and also some awareness. So hopefully, our young generation uh, going to grow and have uh, at least positive minds yeah, about sustainable agriculture. So the introduction for today. So I'm going to start with what is sustainable agriculture. We're going to we need to know what is eh, sustainable agriculture. What is the definition? Eh, uh, because without knowing the, the meaning, eh, we, we cannot get into the ideas and also to the awareness. Uh, what should we do? Okay. So basically, sustainable uh, sustainable agriculture uh, plays around yeah, with the definition of the sustainable development. Yeah. Uh, sustainable development comes first, yeah, where where people already talking and start discussing about the, what is sustainable. Yeah. Uh, even even during the sixties, fifties, seventies, people already. Uh, uh, Start, start discussing yeah? uh, what should we do yeah? uh, to sustain yeah? the, the, the development in the world. Okay? So basically the sustainable, sustainable development um, come, come to the agreed uh, uh, definition yeah? where, 
where these uh, ladies, eh, this actually uh, uh, it's quite hard to, to pronounce the name. Okay, maybe I can just uh, say uh, uh, Dr. Brandland. Yeah? She's actually uh, the former Prime Minister of Norway, yeah? the first woman Prime Minister of Norway. And she also, uh, the, the, the uh, she, yeah? she commissioned of the uh, UN, um, UN meeting. So in 1987, yeah, 1987, she introduced uh, the this definition. Okay, so sustainable development is the development that meets that meets the needs, yeah, meet the needs of the present, yeah, our 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 living now, yeah, our people now, yeah, meets our uh, present people yeah, without yeah without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs as well. Okay, so the, the, the sustainable development is about, is about meeting the needs of the presence without we forgetting yeah, that our future generation as well needs, yeah, needs what we have now. Okay, so that's the, 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 the famous, yeah, famous definition uh, from their reports and from their meeting and they agree yeah, to use uh, this uh, like general definition of the sustainable development. Okay, so sustainable agriculture as well, yeah, uh, using the same uh, definition yeah, where uh, we, 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 we need to, to, to apply or to do the production of the the farm okay using the farming practice okay? and also the system okay? that maintain or enhance okay? the economic viability okay? what is economic viability okay? so the, the the profit and okay? the profit of the farmers they, they they produce and they get the profit out of the produce okay and also, we need to maintain the natural resources base, like land, eh? like water, eh? air. So we cannot pollute the air. So uh, we need to 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 maintain our water resources. Okay, as well as ecosystems. Eh? Ecosystem means uh, the people, eh? the animals, uh, the livestock eh? around us. Okay, so so this. Uh, these three, these three uh, item, eh? uh, it's very important eh? uh, during our farming practice. So we, we need to take care of this thing. Okay, so in the sustainable development, also they, they, they introduced the framework, this, the same framework. And the three pillars of uh, sustainable development, which is applicable for sustainable agriculture, where we can say that we need to have equal weight of environmental, yeah, environment, yeah, and also the social, and also the economy. So we cannot achieve the sustainable without neglected the, any of this. So we need to have the equal, equal, uh, uh, range of these three yeah? we need we need to have the profit and also at the same time we need to to uh, to protect our environment and also yeah, we need to protect the social it means that uh, we need to protect our families our neighbors our social our social uh, uh, relationship eh, with the, the, the neighbors, with the communities, with other communities. Okay, so that is the three pillars or three diagram of the the item in the sustainable agriculture. So we, we, we do one by one eh, a little bit detail about the about the three pillars. Okay, so economically viable. It means that if it's no profit, yeah, it's no profit if the, the, the farmers keep producing their, 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 
their produce, yeah, their their yield, but they cannot sell their 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 produce. So what happened? Okay, so they're getting rotten, so they cannot get their profit, yeah? they lost. So if that thing happened, it's not sustainable. Okay, because they cannot get profit, they cannot pay for their for their their production costs. So uh, it's, it's very bad situation for the farm. Okay, so that's in the in the economic part. Now, what about the social so social uh, framework? Okay, so social is very important. Okay? Where where uh, especially yeah, especially during the the hard time. So it supports your emotion. Okay, yeah. So you, you need to have. Have very good relationship with others, yeah? especially with your families, with, with your friends, with your neighbors, yeah? with the communities, because it's, it's the quality of life, yeah? it's quality for, of life of the farmers, okay, of the farm, farm families, and also the farm communities. If they get fight with others, uh, it's, it's not really good to them, okay, so it's not very good for their social relationship. They're not happy, so it might. Uh, affect affect their, their, their life. Maybe they cannot work. They cannot go to go to the farm. Okay. So ecological, yeah, ecological part is, 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 is part of the sustainable framework. So it's very important. Yeah, we have to preserve the resource. Yeah? If we don't have land, what happens? Yeah? If we don't have water, yeah. Uh, we pollute the water. So what happened to the water? Uh, what happened to the, our farm? Right? Without water, we cannot grow anything. Okay. So we 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 also need to think of uh, new uh, new resources. Eh? Just like in the picture, we we they have like this uh, wind uh, wind machine eh? to produce uh, to generate. Uh, electricity eh, to the farm. Okay. So that's the, the three uh, details about the sustainable agriculture uh, framework. Okay. So this is the agenda, eh, food and agriculture in the 2030 agenda. So we can see here. So maybe for, for some of you who, who didn't know that sustainable development has uh, 17, yeah? 17 goals, yeah? you can see here, okay? one up to 17 here. So that is the goals that has been, uh, uh, has been documented yeah? by United Nations to achieve, yeah? they, they, they documented that all these 17 goals, yeah? 17 goals in 2015. Okay, so they hope they can achieve the goals in 2030. So now it's 2021. So we have about nine years to go to achieve, to achieve those sustainable development goals. As you can see here, okay, so all these goals, one up to 17 goals, is very related to agriculture. Okay. For example, eh, for example, number one, okay, so no poverty. So they hope they are uh, almost 80 percent. No, sorry. So they, 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 they found out that more than 80 percent uh, poor people has been uh, live in the rural areas. So what uh, Mr. Oki uh, presented yesterday is very relevant, yeah? very, uh, very good uh, practice. Where we we need to have, yeah? we need to have the rural people, and yeah? hopefully, yeah? hopefully at the same time we can achieve this uh, sustainable de development goals. Yeah? Because many, yeah? many rural peoples. Uh, Working on the in the agriculture area, okay. So so that's how we can help them. So we need to uh, we need to 
introduce new technique we need to help them hopefully yeah hopefully we can reduce the the poverty among the rural uh, people okay so uh so this is how yeah uh, I, I i don't think i need uh, yeah i have to uh, uh i want to i don't think i want to go one by one of these seven things sustainable goals okay uh but you can you can you can have a look okay you can have a look and see how how the the importance yeah, the importance of food and agriculture in each of the seven things uh, seven in uh, sustainable goals that have been implemented by the United Nations. Okay, I just want to to, to, to go to this uh, to these uh, goals where these goals very related to the sustainable agriculture. Where in the target two point four yeah, in the SDG two, the they mentioned about okay, by 2030, by 2030, they need to ensure that sustainable food production, okay, sustainable food production, we can say that sustainable agriculture systems, okay, and also implement the resi resilience, okay, resilience um, uh, residents, okay? Brazilian residents, I'm sorry. Okay. Implement resilience agriculture practice, sorry, okay. And implement resi resilience agricultural practice and increase the productivity and also increase the production that have, okay. you can see it here, okay. that have maintained ecosystem. Maintain ecosystem that strengthen the capacity of adaptation to climate change, to extreme weather, to drought, to flood, and also to other disasters, especially nowadays with the COVID-19 pandemics. They did not mention the, the pandemic here because they, 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 they documented all these goals in 2015 where there is no COVID-19 yet. Okay. So, so they hope eh, by 2020, 2030, they have the system, eh, the sustainable agriculture system, where we can maintain the ecosystem, can maintain the, the environment, can maintain the, the, the social, uh, I mean the people, okay? And hopefully we can have, uh, we can have a very good, or we can end the zero hunger, the 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 people that have no food. Hopefully by twenty thirty, that's the target. That's the target, and for SDG two, SDG two, the zero hunger. Because because uh, it's actually many people don't have food. Don't have food. So even even during this COVID nineteen pandemic, some people having hard time so they they don't have food to eat so hopefully hopefully with, with very good uh, food production system with with the with the help yeah, with some people so nobody hunts nobody nobody can uh, don't have food okay so how to measure the sustainable agriculture so that's uh, that's a very interesting question yeah. How can we measure uh, 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 the effect? Eh, the effect of uh, without uh, affecting the environment. How can we we measure uh, how good the relationship of the people? How can we measure uh, uh, profit? Eh? So, so United Nations, eh, United Nations have come up with the indicators. So indicators means that uh, the, the statistical uh, measures, eh, how we can we can calculate at least eh, uh, what is the level of sustainable agriculture for, for each country. Okay, so this is just a summary. 
Yeah, this is just a summary. Eleven sub indicators. Right? Uh, because we're talking about we're talking about the the the, the target two point four, which is zero hunger. Yeah? So I'm just showing here the the indicators for 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 the subsection two point four. Yeah? When this is the how how yeah? how United Nations come up with documentation how to measure the sustainable energy. So it's actually more than 200 indicators available where the, the, the United Nations come up to measure all the 70s of SDGs. Okay, so this is just for indicator 2.4. Okay, so using this indicator, it actually is very very much debates on, on, on the sustainable sustainable things. Yeah, so, so many debates. But at least, yeah, at least they come up. Uh, with uh, some uh, rules, eh? some uh, standard of operation, uh, how to calculate them. Okay, so this is uh, the the indicators, including uh, they need to measure the output of the farm eh? per hectare. Uh, so the, the, there is the, there are there is how they they match to the framework. Eh? So with the output value, they can measure the economics part of the sustainable agriculture. With the income, they can uh, uh, measure also the economy. Okay, so they also have like uh, soil degradation uh, measurements, water availability, okay, management of the fertilizers, and also the pesticides where they they match to the environmental parts of the sustainability. And also the, the social parts, eh? the social parts where they, they, they want to know about the wages, eh? how much the farmers get when they, they, they uh, working in the farm, okay? How about their, their insecurity and also their tenure, okay? So that's how, and that's how the uh, sustainable agriculture uh, has been measured. So how they looks like? So this is how they they they're going to present or reporting the indicators. Uh, uh, I mean the the the, the research. Yeah? How they're going to present it? Okay. So this is just an uh, example yeah, of the dashboard for SDG indicators 2.4, yeah, where each, each of the indicators uh, has been plotted in this graph and they have like uh, traffic light, yeah, traffic light uh, dashboard. Okay, traffic light dashboard where, where the red, yeah, the red is is the unsustainability uh, conditions okay so the, the yellow is the 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 range in between the unsustainability and the sustainability and the, the green is the sustainability level eh, where they achieve the sustainable okay so they, they give giving range eh, to the to the data eh, where they collect and also where they introduce all the uh, the participants eh, of this survey. So they're going to have, they're going to produce eh, this type of uh, uh, reports or indicate indicators report eh, uh, how each country uh, uh, level eh, uh, up to the sustainable agriculture. Uh, achievement. Okay, so that, this is how how uh, we're going to have for each country. So at the moment we we can't find any any data yet, any graph yet for each country because I guess uh, all the data still they're, they're still collecting all this data, so we cannot have we cannot see what is the level of each country yet. Okay. Okay, so this is our our second part. 
Okay, so the challenges for future generations. So many of the participants of this uh, course is our young generations. Okay, uh, you need to know what is the challenges first eh, before you can think something how to 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 overcome all those challenges. So I'm I'm just showing. So just to to, to warn you that uh, all those all the pictures. Eh, uh, in this presentation is taken in the net okay uh, yeah some some of them have uh, have licensed by uh, Commons uh, creative Commons okay so but maybe some of them uh, you can just find uh, freely uh, I mean when you google or you and when you search in the net okay so the first challenge is the environmental challenge okay? so how we how nowadays yeah, uh, we, we have some uh, challenges like flooding yeah? like um, uh, the, the tsunami okay so it's, it's, it's very challenging for the farmers yeah? when something happened when environmental Issues happen uh, like flooding or the, the the water scarcity happen. Okay, so how are we going to 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 to, to overcome all these problems? Okay, so and also when when we we going to open new farm, okay, we need to do the land clearing. Okay, land clearing. So what happened to the to the land? Okay, so we need to cut the trees so we clear just like in the in, in this picture okay before before uh you you can work in this uh land so what 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 did you do to the land okay so you, you cleared all the trees and everything so so sometimes yeah yeah the, during those those uh, process it's actually it's not very good for for the for the soil okay yeah sometimes the the landslides can happen okay uh, so it, it's it's challenging yeah? it's challenging uh, to some others yeah? sometimes we lost all the animals uh, yeah? in the in the ecosystem okay that's that's about the environmental challenge that you need to think of, okay? And also the, the climate change, the flood, okay? So when this happened, okay, when this happened, the farmers lost all their, their, their yield, okay? So their produce, they cannot get, uh, they cannot save the animals sometimes, okay? So they're going to lose, to, to, to lose them. So uh, what can we do about it, okay? So pest and disease, okay. So pest and, and disease is, is very common yeah, in the agricultural sectors. It's common problems to the farmers. Yeah. How are we going to, to, to overcome the problems? Yeah. Now nowadays people just use the pesticide and also the, the, the insecticides or the fungicides. Okay, so the, in in this uh diagram we can see how uh the the application of the pesticides okay? just uh, an example to you okay? how much each country okay? each country using the pesticides okay? so you can just go to this uh, website okay? you can you can you can choose the region okay? choose the region uh, which region you want to see okay so this is the world world uh, data where we can see yeah, we can see that more than 20 kilos of pesticide have been used in several countries okay so it's, it's quite worrying yeah? Uh, yeah but sometimes that's that's the the, the farmer's choice yeah? if not they're going to lose their their profit okay so what about the the uh, the impact eh? the impact to the environment 
but also impact to the uh, to the social I and mean, to the people to other people okay so that's that's something we need to think of okay so the, the agriculture agricultural policies okay agricultural policies where uh, some policies in 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 some countries uh, is not really uh, support the agricultural sectors so how how the, this future generation can help uh, about this okay so maybe some of you in the future going to be somebody uh, yeah, with with uh, highest ranking uh, uh, um, uh, highest ranking uh, uh, occupation or jobs in 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 the in the ministry or something. So maybe you, you, you need yeah you need to think of yeah, about supporting uh, or producing the policies that supports the agriculture and skills and talent. And also the attitude, yeah, attitude. Uh, yeah. Yesterday we 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 hear we heard from Mr. Oki yeah, how how to tackle the rural people. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 challenge. Yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. If you want to to go just to implement your technology sometimes they may be yeah, they might be uh, rejected yeah? they might reject you okay so you, you need to find a way yeah, how to 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 actually get involved to them and apply or give uh, them uh, a new technologies to be to, to, to be used okay and also the attitude yeah? Uh, we need to have a right attitude eh, to get involved in the agricultural sectors. Okay? Because sometimes uh, uh, young people just don't have the passion. Okay? Sometimes when you you lost, you, you just you just give up and, and, and do something else. Okay? So we, we really need the very good attitude. Okay, so the, the, the second final uh, parts of this talk is about the strategies. Okay? This is just some ideas okay? to take on okay? yeah, as a younger, youngsters, okay, how to achieve the sustainable agriculture. Okay. So the land, okay, the resources, okay? the our land is in our hand. So nobody is care about that except us. Okay, except us. So Every day, every year, we lost about twenty-four billions of fertile soils. Okay, so we keep we keep planting and planting without really think what happened to the soil. Okay, so that is actually the unsustainable practice. Yeah? Uh, using the the soil without thinking, uh, without uh, uh, apply any any. Uh, good application of like something like uh, cover crops eh, to 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 get the fertile soil back. Okay, and also we sometimes do the monoculture. Eh? We we only plant one uh one crops every year. Okay, so that that is the monoculture. It's not very good. Okay, so we need to do to have the uh. Like crop, uh, crop crop rotation. I'm going to talk about that uh, later. Okay, so so we need to think about how to maintain all uh, of our lands, and we, because if not us, so nobody else can do that. Okay, so this is just the the the, the basic principles eh, in the sustainable farming systems. Eh? Where we need to enhance the farm productivity in the long term. Okay. Uh, it's like that. Um, uh, the, the production of the, the produce, okay, and we need to maintain that. Okay, so every year we, we're going to have uh, the same or we're going to have more of the farm productivity. Okay, 
And also we need to minimize eh, the, the, the adverse impacts to the to, to our natural resources. Okay. And also we need to minimize the residues. Okay? Minimize the residues from the chemicals, from the fertilizers. Okay? Uh, maybe we can apply, we can we can use the organic systems, okay? uh, organic fertilizers in order to reduce all the chemicals uh, fertilizers. Okay. And also we need to maximize the, the, the net social benefit. Okay? Net social benefits means our profit, okay, our relationship. Okay. So, and also the last one is we need to do the flexible farming system, okay, uh, where we where we integrate, eh, integrate other crops, we integrate with, with the livestock, okay. So that is this that, that's just the, the, the principle of the uh, sustainable farming systems. We need to, to take care of the the natural resources and also the ecosystem. Okay, this is what I'm talking about, that the crop rotation. Okay? We cannot just um, planting the corn all, all years around. Okay, we need to, to, to at least, eh? or at least uh, uh, to change, eh? change to other crops. Okay? And also we can also, uh, grows the the cover the, the cover crops okay at least to, to maintain the fertility of the soil and also when we do the crop rotation okay, we can confuse the the insects and also all the pests okay sometimes uh you get rats in your corn farming okay in your corn farm when you change to other crop maybe the the the, the, the the rat get confused and cannot get their food in your farm anymore. That's the importance of, of uh, do the crop rotation. And also we need to conserve the, the plant and also the animal genetic resources, okay? Because it's very important to have the heterogeneous uh, varieties. You cannot stick to, to only one varieties because what happened eh, when the, the disease or, or the pest eh, infected to your, your only one varieties? What happened to them? So you, you cannot you don't have any backups. So it's going to trouble you. You're going to lose, lose everything. Okay. So that's why eh, that's why we need to conserve the genetic resources. Because using the genetic resources, you can breed new varieties. Then you can bring new, uh, new livestock, new, new things. Yeah? when you have the genetic resources. Okay, okay. Uh, the, 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 the use of the technologies. Okay, so nowadays people use the talking about the IoT, talking about the soilless culture. Okay, when you have uh, not very fertile soil, what? What technology can you can you implement eh, to do to to involve the in, in the agriculture systems? Okay, we, we have many uh, many technology nowadays. So, so it's up to us. Eh, it's up to you. Eh, what technologies you want to use, and also it's really it also depending on uh, the cost. Okay, so maybe you can choose eh, you can choose any other technologies without causing costing you very much and uh, the, the strategies of farmers empowerment and also to enhance the the, the national policies eh, when you have very good policies that support agriculture systems so that the agriculture system, uh, agriculture sectors uh, can and develop more, can produce more because you have very good support systems. Eh? This is uh, uh, the pictures of the 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 chili farming, eh? chili farmings, uh, by one of the agropreneur. Uh, where 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 he plant all the chilies, and they get support, eh? and then he get support from the. The the uh, food supply the food supply system okay, where somebody takes all the produce and sell to others. Okay? That's how the the, the, the system can help. Okay? The 
they still can have the, the farmers. And also uh, in Malaysia, eh, we have something like farmers field school. And I believe that many in other many countries also implement the same thing where in the in the farmers field school, uh, uh, it's like the extension program where we teach the farmers with the new information, new technologies, so they can implement that. So it's something it's, it's very related to the to the policies of the government. Okay. And last one, I think like the last one is start small. Okay. Uh, don't don't really. Uh, uh, to ambition, okay, to ambition to, 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 to start big, okay, because it, it's going to cost you. So when you start small, okay, when you start small, it can get yourself into the, the set, into the, the, the pipeline. If you understand things, eh? uh, when, when, if something happened, if you lost or anything, so you can get back, okay. So, this, the, the picture just showing you right, uh, some of the initiatives in Malaysia where uh, the government uh, very support the uh, young, uh, young agropreneur, right? youngsters who wants to get involved into the agriculture sector, sector so they, they have the program for them. So uh, in the program, they're actually giving some fun okay, to the to the youngsters to do their agriculture uh, production. Okay, so so it's something to think of. Okay, uh, because in in my experience, uh, I have more than ten years uh, experience teaching uh, in the under, uh, undergraduate uh, students. So maybe not more than 10% of my alumni or my ex-students get involved into the agropreneur, okay? So no, they're just working as, as the officer or anything. They, they, don't, really, don't, they don't really uh, interested eh? or they, they don't really want to take the challenge eh, to be the agropreneur, which is uh, something like, Quite sad, eh? quite sad for me. Okay, this is just the, the, the last part is the take home messages, okay, where the unsustainability happened when the practice and also the technologies used is not, a, it's, it's, it, uh, it can cause the environmental degradation, okay, it can cause the economically not possible. Eh? But it's, it's just give the loss to the farmers eh? and also the culturally uh, unacceptable. That is the unsustainability. Okay? We really need needs to take care of these three elements. Okay? And also eh? and also the continuous and also the systematic research eh? in agri agriculture are needed. So we need people keep uh, producing new technologies so uh, farmers or the communities are the farm communities can use the technologies. And the sustainability is not one man job. It's not one man job. It's really our responsibility. It's not others. You can, you can, you can just uh, ask people to do the sustainable agriculture if we don't want to do that. Okay, so I guess that's all from me. Thank you very much for listening. Listen to you, Dr. Zuhud. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramsa, for the great presentation about the sustainable agriculture. For the discussion, uh, please let us to make it in the last uh, part. So we will hear the presentation from Dr. Farida first. After that, we will have discussion. Is that okay, Dr.? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Farida, are you there? Yes, Dr. Zuhud, I'm here. Hello, Dr. Farida. Uh, nice to meet you. This is our first time, yeah, Bu, yeah? Yeah, yeah, this is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I already uh, gave uh, some uh, introduction regarding uh, our today's topics. So because you have already joined, so I would like to give the time to you to present your uh, presentation, Dr.
Let me share the screen, uh, the uh, my slide first, okay? Yeah, yeah. So can you see the slide? Yes, Doctor. Yes. Alright, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to uh, all of you. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank to uh, Dr. Zuhud uh, for this uh, invitation. So I think this is the first time for me to uh, join uh, the program uh, with the crop science, yeah, the tropical uh, agribusiness uh, people. So Alhamdulillah, because I'm, I'm from the first science program. Okay, maybe it's um, uh, for all of you is uh, different with your field, but I try to make it like a, uh, because the food and also uh, agriculture is uh, we cannot separate it. Yeah, uh, we, we work together. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, as a um, raw material of the product, a food product, so we need uh, the the yield from the crop. Yeah, uh, the agriculture. A year in order to get a very good quality of a uh, food product yeah so before i start um uh, let me introduce uh, myself yeah i'm uh, dr farida yeah yeah here uh, from a uh, lecturer uh, from food science program uh, and also uh, we are in the same uh, faculty with uh, i'm in the same faculty with dr misa yeah, faculty of fisheries and food science um and then uh, if you have any question yeah, regarding to uh, this topic after this, then uh, feel free to contact me yeah, in, in this email. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, before uh, I continue with the... Let me check first, okay. All right. Okay, so what, what I want... Uh, with, uh, at the end of this topic that a uh, student, yeah, all of you uh, can explain uh, what is the sensory evaluation. Yeah, my topic is a sensory evaluation and uh, the consumer acceptability of food. Uh, you can explain uh, the sensory evaluation concept and the sensory methods applicable yeah, uh, to industry. Actually, the, the, the sensory evaluation is not only for food science. Yeah. Uh, the crop science, yeah, uh, the agribusiness, uh, the fisheries, yeah, everyone can use the sensory evaluation technique. And then the second part is uh, hopefully students can identify attribute involved in the sensory evaluation uh, of foods. And uh, lastly, uh, explain the application of the uh, uh, sensory evaluation. So I try to make it uh, not too uh, technical. Uh, yeah, because uh, this is only the overview uh, regarding to the sensory evaluation and uh, consumer acceptability. Okay, what is uh, the sensory evaluation? So the sensory evaluation actually is a scientific discipline uh, that used to evoke. Yeah, when we say uh, the terms of evoke, then we have uh, the product, yeah, or for example, in food product, yeah, and then how we can evaluate the product, yeah, in order to measure. Then we have a specific method in order to evaluate the product, yeah, uh, and then we have to analyze, yeah. When we get, uh, let's say, for the sensory evaluation, we give a score to the uh, product, and then we have to analyze the. Yeah? Uh, value that we got uh, during the process of uh, sensory evaluation. And finally, we have to interpret uh, the result. Yeah? Because uh, for all the analysis that we do, if we don't know how to interpret the data, so it's become useless. Yeah? Nothing, yeah? nothing. There is no meaning. Uh, we, we can uh, analyze the data, but then we don't know how to interpret the data. So that's why in the sensory evaluation, uh, at the end of the process, we have to interpret what's the response to the product. Of course, when we talk about the sensory evaluation, it's regarding to the uh, all the product that we see by our sense. Yeah? I'm sure all of you are familiar. Yeah, we have five uh, sensory organs. So uh, in the receive of the scent of sight, uh, smell, uh, touch, uh, taste, and hearing. Maybe some of you, uh, when we talk about the sensory evaluation, uh, maybe you uh, 
what in your mind is uh, we have to test the product. It's not only test the product. Yeah, there is a lots of uh, evaluation that we can uh, we can do in the sensory evaluation. Before I proceed uh, more longer, uh, I'm sure that all of you uh, come across with this experience yeah? uh, as a food test, uh, tester. Yeah? When we go to maybe shopping mall or maybe we go to the uh, fruit stall in the street, uh, the seller or the salesman or saleswoman uh, come to you and um, give you a, a sample of the product. Yeah? Uh, this is also part of the sensory evaluation. They want a very uh, quick feedback from you yeah, as a consumer. Uh, they want to know either you want to buy the product or maybe uh, you can give a suggestion uh, to their new uh, product development. Or in fact, uh, as a fruit seller, uh, they also uh, give you yeah, a sample uh, to, uh, to try the product. Yeah? So if you uh, feel good with the product, of course, you will be buy the product. And if not, you will reject the product. So they know. Uh, very quick uh, feedback from the customer. I want to ask to so all uh, the uh, 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 participants, is that okay that the Zuhud is a one a two way uh, communication? Is that okay? Of course, doctor. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, maybe uh, the participant can just uh, 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 jot down in the chat. Uh, box. So, what you, you can describe with the flash of this durian? I think with the question uh, to make sure that you uh, can get more understanding on the sensory evaluation. Can you jot down in the chat box? So, what you can describe with the flash of this durian? Yes, yellow. Okay. Big, yummy. <laughs> okay. Any any else? Look flash, uh, fresh and uh, soft, creamy, freshy, creamy. Okay. Any more? Of course, edible Carol. Very good. <laughs> okay. Mature, yeah. It's a ripe fruit. Very strong smell. So you can expect what happened to the to the flesh, right? Okay, very good. And I also have a, another a picture. How about this ice cream? So why do you think? I'm really sorry because I'm in a food science uh, program. We only talk about food. <laughs> It's a pink, oily, yeah, creamy. Okay, sweet. Of course, it's a cool because of ice cream. Refreshing, delicious, yeah. Now, I'm sure that all of you feel hungry, right? <laughs> I hope all of you already take your lunch, yeah? So if not, uh, it will be affect you to focus in my uh, lecture, all right? Okay, so actually what are you uh, list down in the chat box these are types of uh, uh, sensory attribute, yeah? So how about this one? Which one you prefer? Okay, some of you will choose A. And some of you will choose B. Let's see. Okay, most of you choose A. Do you have any justification why you choose the A or the, the one who choose A? Just jot down in the chat box. Or if you want to uh, unmute, that you can you can uh, do. Because it's crunchy, look pretty, yeah? Color golden, golden in color, very good. All right, looks yummy, okay. And how about uh, the one who choose B?
I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is all about food. <laughs> okay. So you see, even though we have a two sim, uh, two sim sample, uh, it's a fried chicken, but everybody have their own uh, in terms of the quality of perception, right? So that's why the quality of the product is very subjective. Everybody have their own uh, requirement or own needs. Yeah? Maybe some of you uh, looks for the uh, crunchiness, looks for the color, and some of you maybe uh, look for the oiliness, yeah? because maybe uh, you say that it's not good to your hair, so you want the dry one. So it depends on individual. So that one is a part of the sensory evaluation. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Yeah, hopefully it's not too hungry. Okay, I will continue with my lecture. <laughs> okay, uh, all of you that what you are list down just now is a part of the sensory attribute. Uh, in, in a sensory, we call it as an attribute or uh, actually is a property or the characteristic of the product. So one of the uh, main is a uh, color appearance, yeah? size, shape, viscosity, and consistency. And uh, of course, we can get all the attribute through the site. Yeah? Uh, this is actually the external factor that influence how we want to reject or we want to accept the product without we touch or taste the product. Yeah? So that's why People always say that one eats with their eyes first. Yeah, they say uh, just now we already uh, uh, proved that when we you see the picture, then you feel hungry. Okay, um, so this is uh, uh, the terms of the evoke come. Yeah, when we have the product and we try to uh, measure the product. And same goes to the color of the product, yeah, the color of the surrounding, yeah, normally uh, for the packaging, uh, also influence uh, the consumer either to reject or accept the product. Yeah. Um, let's say if you see uh, the, 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 the packaging of the product, uh, this corn, yeah, fresh uh, corn, so you feel uh, want to buy uh, the product. Yeah. Same goes to the, all the design of the packaging. Uh, then also will be effect uh, in uh, either you want to reject or you want to uh, accept the product or we want to buy the product. And uh, or the factor that influence the color of course, the sensitivity of the eyes. Yeah? That's why uh, we as a consumer, so we have to uh, make sure that all five uh, sensory organs are function well. Yeah? So in order we can get a very good or healthy um, uh, life. Yeah? And also is also reflect with the uh, perception yeah? um, of the product. Yeah, some, when we, we see the product, then we, when we try to make the perception, yeah? let's say if you see the, the fried chicken just now, Maybe you talk is a very good product, yeah, but then maybe it's not too delicious. Yeah, uh, it depends on our perception, and I'm sure uh, in the agro uh, or uh, food uh, crop science, uh, you normally uh, do the same thing. Yeah, when we uh, see the changes of the characteristic according to the majority of the uh, product. Yeah, uh, how the changes of the color uh, in terms of the size, yeah, the appearance. Yeah in terms of the taste of the uh, fruit or vegetable. That one is also part of the sensory evaluation. Okay, I have one more uh, question. So what do you think about this mango? What do you think about the flesh of the mango? You can uh, jot down in the chat box too. Can you imagine? Fleshy, yes. Sweet. How about the color of the uh, flesh? Yellow, of course, yeah, it's a ripe uh, fruit. Sweet, okay. This is a type of perception, right? And then, of course, yeah, we expect we can get like this. Okay, 
look unnatural. <laughs> okay. And then how about if you got mango with a green skin? What do you expect? Is a sour, yeah, hot, unripe. Okay. So it's actually you can cut the same like the yellow one. Because different types of uh, species of, uh, of mango, yeah, they have their own. <laughs> so yummy. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure uh, maybe in Indonesia or other country to know about the uh, Haromanis mango. Do you know about this, Dr. Zuhud? About the Haromanis? Yes, doctor. But yeah. I'm not sure our Aromanis and Malaysian Aromanis is same or not. <laughs> oh, maybe we, we have to do a studies on that. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because we know that uh, if we already understand or be familiar with the product, of course we know the quality of the product. But then if nobody understand uh, or nobody familiar with the product, of course they say that it's a sour. That's why at one time, when we want to uh, sell the Haromanis to other country, for example, in uh, Australia, nobody want to buy this, this mango yeah, because they know that is, this is the unripe uh, fruit. But actually, it's a ripe and very delicious. And also, uh, it's a very strong and a very high quality of mango. Uh, then, we focus on the order of the Sample, yeah. Some pro, some people uh, doesn't like uh, the smelly of the durians, yeah. But for me, I'm I'm really love durian. I'm sure some of you love durians too. Okay, uh, so it depends also on the uh, individual perception, and also maybe because of the uh, experience yeah, before. And uh, one more is regarding to the texture, yeah. So uh, let's say uh, it's not only on the solid product, but also in the liquid form. It can also uh, evaluate uh, the attribute of, of texture. Yeah, either it's soft or crunchy, or maybe it's a viscous uh, product. And still, we can use the uh, here in order to uh, to uh, to have a sound of the. Uh, product. It's not all the product or food product have a sound. Yeah? Normally for the chips, yeah? uh, you can just imagine how when, when this baby uh, bite the apple. Yeah? So you can uh, imagine the sound of the crunchiness of the product. And of course, at this, yeah, uh, there is a is a major yeah in the sensory evaluation, but as I mentioned before, uh, when we do the sensory evaluation, not only uh, we evaluate the taste yeah there is a lots of attribute that we can uh, evaluate yeah but uh, then we can see the uh, expression of the face yeah when people eat uh, according to the taste of the product. Uh, let's say this one is a uh, uh, the babies uh, eat the lime uh, or lemon and and they try to uh, express uh, the, how they feel uh, by the uh, face uh, impression. Actually, there is a, a, a five basic tastes. Uh, I'm sure all of you also know about the sweet. Uh, salt, uh, salty, uh, sour, bitter, and uh, one is a uh, um now is very common is a uh, umami, yeah. Uh, it's a very five basic. Not not uh to say that other is not a taste. This is the basic taste. Yeah, we have five basic tastes, and of course, uh, in uh, umami, yeah, normally for the flavor enhancer, uh. Um, I'm sure in Indonesia too, uh, we uh, they also use the same uh, brand. Yeah, we always say that Ajinomoto. Yeah, but actually it's a uh, it's not a product. Yeah, the Ajinomoto is a brand. Okay, uh, this is actually the food enhancer uh, that commonly used in our uh, cooking. Yeah, 
uh, and also actually the umami it can also get from the natural fruit yeah from the mushroom or tapioca even broccoli or tomatoes and uh, some of us also sometimes uh have a quite uh don't really understand what is a flavor actually yeah? a flavor and taste is uh actually is a, a totally different yeah the flavor actually is a combination between uh the taste and also the odor and also the chemical feeling factor when we eat uh food yeah uh, it's not only the taste eh, but it's a for example, if you eat something and then you try to hold your nose, yeah, uh, then you cannot uh, get the full uh, flavor of the product. Uh, it's a combination, both. Yeah? And one more, maybe some of you are familiar with the, this product. It's a miracle fruit. Yeah? Uh, in Malaysia, we call it as buah adaib. Yeah? Uh, it's actually as a, one of the taste modification. Uh, we can modify the sour taste to the uh, sweet taste, yeah. Because in this uh, fruit, they have uh, they contain a protein uh, known as a miracolin, and if you eat uh, only the uh, miracle fruit itself, there is no taste. It's a bland taste, yeah. But then, when you take the mir the miracle fruit after you eating a slice of a uh, sauce of sour like a lemon or lime, then you can get the marvelous aroma or inherent sweetness from the citrus still remain, yeah? but they can uh, heaten uh, the sour of the lemon. Uh, so that's why uh, there is a lot of study done on this uh, miracle fruits, uh, especially for the uh, patient we have a diabetes. So maybe this is one of the alternative that they can still can detect uh, the sweetness of the product without uh, taking any sugar. Uh, in their meal. And I'm sure all of you also know about the uh, taste zone in our tongue, right? Uh, why when we eat uh, ice cream, we just uh, use the uh, tips of our tongue? Is that because of this? Why when we, we eat ice cream and we try to uh, stick out of our mouth our tongue and then we uh, just licking the ice cream yeah actually all of the uh, surface uh, in the tongue have a taste bud yeah so uh, this uh, taste zone actually is wrong there is no we cannot uh, do uh, or we can uh, separate the the, the taste bud uh, in our tongue yeah because all the surface of the tongue can detect all the uh, signs. So this is the taste bud. Yeah, of course, uh, when we a person ages, some of the taste bud don't get uh, to replace. Yeah, that's why uh, if the young people so they can eat uh, and then uh, feel uh, more uh this yeah, compared to the older uh, people and also there is also a factors for example smoking uh when you are smoking so you cannot uh, uh detect uh, some source of the uh, taste because it will be reduced the, the taste part and uh this is i think is a trend right now but i'm not sure in indonesia but in malaysia they are love to eat a very hot and spicy product. Yeah, a ramen from Korean. Yeah, uh, the the noodles, uh, all the spicy spicy product. Yeah, actually, uh, when uh, we eat uh, the same uh, high concentration of the certain uh, product, and it also make us uh, as 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 a taste adaptation. For example, uh, if every day we eat a, a very high concentration of sugar then we cannot detect uh, the low concentration of sugar in a certain product yeah for for you you feel that there is no uh, there the, the the sweetness is very low but for other people uh, who is not very frequent uh, consume the sugar content uh, then they feel that it's too sweet yeah because uh, this is uh, uh, regarding to the taste adaptation a decrease in response under condition of constant 
uh, stimulation. It's not only on the taste adaptation, but also effect on the smell adaptation. For example, if uh, let's say uh, if your room is uh, too smelly, yeah, every day you uh, come to the room uh, and then you're familiar with the room and then you feel that there is nothing, there is not smelly anymore. But for other people, they feel that this too smell. Yeah. Uh, same goes when we do uh, use uh, the perfume. Why every day we use the same perfume in a very high concentration, but at the end we feel there is no smell of the perfume in our body. Yeah, because it's a, a smell adaptation. And there is a lot of factor affecting uh, the uh, sensitivity. It's not only on the taste and also other sense. Uh, let's say for the uh, sensitivity of the ice cream, for example, if the temperature, yeah, the temperature, can we eat ice cream uh, at a cool, uh, frozen uh, product and we can uh, feel uh, the sweetness of the product. But then if the ice cream starts to uh, melt and we feel that the ice cream is too sweet, yeah, they, they have the uh, correlation between the uh, temperature and also uh, the sensory uh, acceptability. And the other one is the taste threshold. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, the threshold is the limit of the sensory capability. Uh, one uh, point that is statically organized uh, uh, at which there is a change in the taste uh, is exit. Yeah, if you can see detect changes happen. Uh, in any particular product, uh, don't then call it as a uh, threshold. Uh, then different people they have their own different threshold. Uh, this one, uh, there is a few types of threshold. For example, it's an absolute threshold where we can detect a very a very the lowest stimulus capable to producing a sensation. Let's say if you drink um, um, mineral water, yeah. Then we find out there is a, a, a different or something uh, taste in the mineral water, but you cannot identify or recognize what is the taste. Uh, then we call it as a absolute threshold. But when we you can organize, recognize, and identify, and you can say, oh, this is a sweet taste. Then we call it as the recognition threshold. And the last one is the uh, threshold level, the terminal threshold. Yeah. Uh, if let's say if we have a fruit juice, yeah, we add a sugar, a solution of sugar in the fruit juice. Uh, if you add another concentration, increase the concentration, and uh, at the end, in the maximum uh, of the addition of the sugar concentration, we still can detect the same level of sweetness, uh, then we call it as the terminal threshold. Even though we add a very uh, high concentration, but still we can uh, we can say that we only uh, detect the same level at the previous uh, edition. So in the sensory evaluation, actually they have the three methods. Yeah? Normally, uh, uh, this is the three a uh, main category in the sensory uh, is a discriminative uh, when uh, we want to differentiate between the product. Yeah, let's say we have a two product, so we want to identify is there any difference between the product. And normally we have a panel yeah, in order to evaluate the product. Uh, for the descriptive test, is we use the train panel. The panel need to have a screening um, and. Uh, training process uh, before uh, uh, to be a train panel and how they can describe yeah that uh, like similar with what you do during the process uh, the, the previous slide just now how you can describe the attribute of, of the product uh, we are not expert yeah if the expert panel they can describe for example for the flesh of durians Maybe they can come up with the hundred ten uh, terminologies of terms uh, in order to describe the flesh of durian. Okay, and uh, for the consumer acceptability, normally we use the effective test yeah, in order to know the degree of like likeness of the uh, product. Yeah, so the more 
uh, we uh, get the panel so the more uh, we can get the uh, result yeah, in order to determine uh, the degree of lightness of the particular product. So that's why in the sensory evaluation, uh, actually uh, we use the sensory evaluation in uh, QA or QC uh, as a quality control, uh, including uh, to determine the quality of raw material and in, and also for the sensory uh, specification. Yeah. Um, so we want to produce a product as a, a food manufacturer or even as a uh, entrepreneur, we want to uh, produce a product that can meet or suit the consumer need. So we have to know what is this, uh, the requirement uh, that the consumer want. Uh, so then we, we can uh, produce uh, according to the consumer needs. Yeah? And uh, we also can modify uh, the formulation yeah? in, in, uh, when we get the result from the sensory evaluation, then we can modify. Yeah, either uh, to make sure that uh, the quality of the product is uh, can be accept, accepted by the consumer. Let's say if we have, um, when we want to compare our product, we have the prototype product, and then we want to compare with the uh, competitor product. Yeah? So we want to know either our product can be accepted uh, similar or maybe it should be better than the, our competitor. So this is uh, how uh, the sensory evaluation help the industry in order to get the uh, quality of product. And of course, for the consumer acceptability, as a manufacturer, we have to understand, we have to know what is the requirement uh, or the um, consumer needs yeah, before we start to produce any uh, product, yeah? Because uh, at the end, the consumer is our potential buyer. And this is, I want to share uh, uh, some of the technique or the, uh, we call uh, as a score sheet uh, or the evaluation form that we can use in order to determine uh, or evaluate the sensory acceptability uh, of the consumer of the consumer, yeah. Uh, now, uh, yeah, this is the manual one. Uh, we use a piece of paper. Uh, it depends on the type of sample, how many sample that we have. Uh, so each uh, sample have uh, each uh, piece of paper. And now we have a new technology, so we can just use the uh, by using the digital uh, school sheet, yeah. And then we give a score. Yeah, this is a, a example of the evaluation that we can do during the sensory evaluation. And I also want to share uh, to all of you, uh, this is the sensory booth during the evaluation. Uh, this is the uh, evaluation session. So we have to separate the panel, the panel, who, uh, the one who evaluates the sample uh, in order to avoid any bias during the evaluation. We want to know the opinion of the panel um, uh, then uh, without any uh, influence or any uh, interrupt by the other panel. And this one also during the sensory evaluation session. And if you, you can see here, all the sample uh, will be coded with three digit number. And also we present the sample uh, in the a random permutation. Uh, there is a, a methods that we want to avoid any Yes, yeah. So different panel they have their own uh, set of arrangement. I think that's all, Dr. Zuhud. Yeah. I hope uh, if you want to uh, know more regarding to the sensory evaluation and also about the uh, consumer acceptability on the fruit or vegetable uh, impact of the food product. So. Please uh, come and join us in University of Malaysia Terengganu. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Farida, Dr. Farida, for the great presentation uh, about the uh, sensory, uh, food sensory. I think that's a really good uh, topic, Bu, because in agribusiness, in my field, also we are talking or we are studying about uh, consumer preference. But we usually only 
uh, based on packaging or maybe based on the taste, but not really detail like uh, what you presented. So maybe uh, for my students that under my guidance, if they are interested about the consumer acceptability and uh, food, uh, like you have told us, maybe I can suggest some of your uh, materials. Bu. That's yes, really, yes. yeah. Yes, yeah, sure, that is good. They, they are free to, to contact me too. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Ibu. Okay, next, let's go to the discussion, uh, Dr. Farida and Dr. Ramisha. Uh, we do have some, we, we have already uh, got some question from the participants. So I would like to share the, the uh, word that containing the question from the participants. Maybe we will go to the Dr. Ramisha first. Hello, Dr. Ramisha. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Ramisha, uh, there are uh, some questions from uh, for you, doctor. First okay. come from one AVV from UM, UMT. I want to ask question, how can we build the interest in the future Uh, generation on the sustainable agriculture. Okay, so AVV, okay, AVV, yeah, actually AVV is my students. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, so thank you AVV. So, uh, I guess to to attract or to to build the interest in the future generations, uh, we need to do more. Uh, that yeah, this is my my subject. That's, my suggestions yeah uh, we need to do more campaign or more programs eh? more awareness yeah uh, about this the, the application of sustainable agriculture okay even uh, we need to do the programs uh, to the to the children yeah? to the children's up to the 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 uh, the working environment even even in the working environment so i guess what we can do is to do more campaign more awareness okay happy fee okay next come from umt again bu from uh, mr abdul rahman i kindly want to ask a question to dr amisha will technological progress in agriculture enable the development of sustainable environment friendly agriculture okay so rahman i guess yes yeah with, with, with the more new technology okay uh, where people invest or invent te new technology yeah, in agriculture because they want to solve the problems okay If, when we solve the problem sometimes uh, with the technology we can we can uh, make the, the production of the, the crops uh, yield uh, might be uh, easier, yeah? easier to the farmers with, with the technology. So I guess uh, when, yeah, when the farmers get used to the new technology, they can, they can easily produce uh, Uh, many crops, many yields, so they become happy. Yeah, they get more profit. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's the way how we can achieve the, the sustainable environment. Yeah, sometimes we use less resources, so in order to get yeah, in, in order to get the crop yield yeah, with the use of the technology. Okay, next question come from UMT again from Mr. Israel, uh, what are the future strategies that can we uh, introduce and highlight in order to achieve goal of zero hunger for the population in future generation? Okay, so future strategies. Uh, I would suggest, yeah, I would suggest we started, we, we started doing that in our own community, okay? So uh, the, the, the term is zero hunger is 
quite popular nowadays. Eh? With the time, the COVID nineteen pandemics, eh? we 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 facing uh, many news that people don't have food to eat. Okay, so now in Malaysia we have one campaign that we call that as white flag. Okay, when you having problems, when you don't have food, okay, you you just have to put the white flag okay, in front of your house. So in your community, okay, in, in, in the community, and when they see that the white flag, then somebody can help, help you. Okay. So because now there's so many uh, problems with the suicide problem. Yeah? So many people just uh, take their life easily because of the burden, because of the problem. So I guess the goal, the, the, to achieve the, the, the zero hunger, I would suggest we start from our own communities and hopefully everybody get the awareness and hopefully, okay, with, with, with new technologies, uh, uh, we, can, we can produce more food and no more uh, hunger in the, in, in, in our, in the human population. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amisa. Next question from uh, Mr. Muhammad Ivan Rizki from 11 Maret University. Uh, if urea is currently being used by almost of uh, farmers throughout Indonesia with the aim of increasing production, however, this actually makes the soil damage or hurt and cannot store water for a long time. So with this, what should we do, yeah, especially as an extension worker in the hope of creating sustainable agriculture? What about suggesting switching to organic fertilizer, such as using organic fertilizer? Will it take a long time to adapt to the soil? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Rizky, for the, for the question. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the, the obstacle, yeah? the obstacle of uh, implementing organic fertilizers. Uh, however, yeah, however, I guess nowadays there are many new uh, research findings yeah, have been uh, published yeah, and or maybe the extension workers or extension officers can can uh, gather all new information yeah. maybe the, 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 they can they can uh, um, teach the, the farmers uh, about new technologies of organic fertilizer like using the liquid liquid organic fertilizers okay so uh, yeah I can see uh, many uh, many findings about the liquid uh, organic fertilizers applications has been been published and maybe the the, the workers can get those new, uh, new information and also spread the the, the 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 findings to the farmers. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Next come from uh Hyrule Khalifa from UMT. There is a statement that said no matter what we cannot beat nature as term of the pest and disease challenge in sustainability agriculture. Is it worth it that we keep using chemical pesticide or insecticide as the pest will build up their antibody based on the effectiveness of the pesticide? Okay, so yeah, that's the challenge of the pest and disease uh, problems in sustainable, sustainability agriculture. And of course, yeah, it's not worth it using uh, main a lot of chemical pesticides and insecticides because uh, what happened when we use a lot right, the chemical or uh, the chemical pesticides and insecticides those uh, the the pathogens eh, or the insects eh, they they will evolve eh, and they they they're going to have resistance they they're going to develop the resistance 
to the pesticides. So that's the, the, the main problems uh, why we cannot, yeah, we cannot use lots or maybe we cannot use only one type of pesticide or insecticide in our farm. Okay? And also we need to reduce that because in order to achieve, in order to achieve the sustainability, we need to use less chemical of pesticides and also insecticides. Okay, maybe we can do the crop rotation. We can use the 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 organic uh, pesticide or insecticides. Okay? In yeah, just just a, an alternative yeah? an alternative ways to avoid the resistance in the fun, in the pathogens or in the insects. Okay, thank you, uh, doctor. Next, come from Uma Malani. How about the GM crops, genetic modified crops in agriculture? Is it uh, can we use for the sustainable agriculture? Okay, so about the GM crop, yeah, Uma Malani. So there are many debates eh, about the GM crops. Uh, yeah, if 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 I if I answer that it's not sustainability uh, mesh, yeah, uh, using the GM crop that might be uh, all those uh, researchers or inventors the GM crop will be angry at me. Okay, but it's actually when 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 we use the GM crops, we tend to do the monoculture. Okay, monoculture practice, which is when we do the monoculture practice, it's not really a sustainable ways uh, to do your farming system. Okay, so because when you use only monoculture, you only use only one varieties in your farm, so you're going to get more pests and disease. Yeah? Yeah? And then what happened? Yeah? And then you... you you're going to lose them. Yeah? You're going to lose your crops when you use only monoculturing system. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's quite hard actually to, 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 mm. to, to just think that GM crop is not sustainable, but I guess we can think that monoculturing is not very good ways in sustainable agriculture. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amisa. I think for the next question, it's the same, yeah? Same uh, from uh, Uma Malani, from Khairul uh, Khalila, same about the genetic uh, modified crops, doctor. So I think the answer is uh, same, yeah, doctor, yeah? Yeah, I think that the, the, uh, the, the question is about the, the GM crop. Is it, is it can attract the consumer when they have very good group? Crop yield appearance. That's the the question, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Could yeah. you answer that, Doc? Uh, oh, oh, okay. The, the consumer, of course, yeah, of course. With, with GM method, you're going to have a very good yield, very good produce. Right? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess the, the same thing with with your answer to to. My, my answer to Uma, okay? uh, we, need, we need to think uh, global. We need to think out of the box. Okay? When we only use only one, so what happened next? Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amisa. Uh, let's move to Dr. Farida. Hello, Dr. Farida. Yes, doctor. Okay, uh, first question come from UMY, from Miss Vicky. Uh, is there a possibility of food wash during food testing? How to prevent it? All right. Okay. Thank you for the question, uh, Miss Wiki. Uh, Wiki, yeah? yeah, from UMY. Actually, uh, uh, do you mean is a food testing is a sensory evaluation? If the sensory evaluation actually is a very planned, well planned uh, process. Uh, we don't do, uh, and uh, the sample that we use, uh, we already calculate. Yeah, we know amount of the panel, and we know uh, how many sample, the, the portion of the sample that we uh, want to uh, give to the panel. So there is actually, there is no, no food waste during the process of uh, sensory evaluation, unless 
they didn't uh, taste uh, properly. Yeah, maybe there is a lot, uh, uh, some of the waste uh, from maybe they just uh, eat or uh, evaluate half of this as uh, a product. Yeah, uh, but uh, we, we uh, as you know, the sensory evaluation actually is not uh, uh, the eating process, it's the evaluation process. Yeah, we just taste the product. Yeah, and then uh, in a very uh, small portion of the size. Uh, it's not like a normal consumption, okay? Let's say if you want to uh, evaluate uh, the nugget, so we, we don't give uh, the one big nugget, yeah? Maybe cut into four, yeah, uh, of the nugget. So uh, we can uh, reduce the food waste during the process of sensory evaluation. I think uh, we will answer your question, Wiki. Okay, thank you, Dr. Farida. Next question from, from UMT. Uh, Mr. Havizuddin, some, some farmers will use chemical compound to ensure the uh, crop can attract consumer. This situation will endanger the health of consumer. What is uh, Dr. Farida view on this issue? Should we as producer care about consumer health or choose to maintain product quality and use chemical product to attract consumer more? Okay, thank you, uh, Hafizuddin. Yeah, uh, I'm sure as a, uh, it, it depends on, on the, what is the uh, mission of the uh, procedure. Yeah, in food, uh, we have a food law, uh, food regulation, we have a food act, and in fact, uh, we also uh, like uh, have a food safety program in order to avoid any uh, that will be harm to the uh, consumer. Yeah. But for me, uh, as a pro uh, producer, we should be more ethic. Uh, we know what is good and what is not good to our consumer. Yeah, um, I'm sure that uh, all of us, yeah, uh, as a food manufacturer or as a producer, we want to produce a very good quality of the product. But we have to um, uh, make sure that all the product that we produce is uh, first is a safe. Uh, then the, the rest uh, come next, yeah? Make sure the product is safe first, yeah? In order to, to avoid any uh, danger or any, um, uh, maybe will be effect to the health of the consumer, yeah? Okay, thank you, doctor. Next come from UMT again, from uh, Julas Win. If food sensory conduct by people are shown in your slides, won't be any error as you said that the degree of sweetness differ for each person. Okay, uh, Jula Zwin, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it depends on the what objective of our uh, uh, study, yeah? what, what we want to know. Let's say if you want to know the degree of lightness of the product yeah? uh, using the acceptance test, uh, uh, we of course, there is a wide range of the perception uh, by, the, by the panel. But the more we get the panel, then the more we get the very good uh, result from, from the uh, evaluation. So um, in sensory, uh, in the consumer acceptability, there is no right and there is no wrong. We have to accept the opinion by the, con the, by the consumer in order to modify or to maintain the quality of the product. I okay. hope it answer your question. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Next come from UMT. Can I ask uh, Dr. Farida, is there have any condition for participants to follow the food evaluation and how many people must join for the evaluation form or food test to get the best result during the food evaluation test? Okay. Aisha, uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned before, there is a three, uh, three uh, a main category in the sensory evaluation. One is a discriminative. Uh, so this this uh, discriminative test, we need an uh, experienced panel. So they have to go a series of uh, evaluation before they uh, become a panel. And for the descriptive, uh, we use the train panel. Of course, still, we need a train uh, session before you can select it by the uh, uh, as a uh, trim panel, okay? But then for the consumer acceptability, everybody can be a panel, yeah? Uh, so uh, 
from here, uh, let's say, uh, in fact, if you want to produce a product for babies, so babies also can be uh, as our panel, yeah. Uh, let's say we want to produce uh, um, uh, apa tu, uh, the, the milk powder, yeah? the baby milk powder, instant milk powder uh, to babies. So are the panda is the parents of the babies? What do you think? Yeah, we, we don't do, uh, we don't give the sample to the, the parents yeah? because the babies will be uh, eat or uh, use the product. Okay, so we have to know what is the objective of the sample and uh, why um, and uh, what is the significant data that can reflect or can give uh, the best result to the uh, objective of the uh, evaluation. Okay, thank you, doctor. Next, uh, from Rizky, Mr. Rizky from 11 Maret University, how to create healthy food? especially during a pandemic with food diversification. Okay, Ivan Rizky, I, I think it's, uh, uh, this one is more on the nutrition or the healthy product, uh, food that we can uh, eat during the pandemic. So we know that, uh, of course, everybody uh, have to um, uh, uh, make sure that you eat a balanced diet yeah, now uh, we have to know yeah, when, when we select the product or we select the food, we know what, what is the nutrient that we can get from, from the product. Yeah, uh, for me, it's easy as long as we can take a moderate uh, amount of the product and should be okay. Yeah, and then drink lots of water. And also, of course, fruit and vegetable should be. Yeah, um, I'm not sure uh, in Indonesia, you know, uh, regarding to uh, our uh, um, uh, health ministry also um, always uh, suggest us to uh, uh, take a small portion, uh, half, half, yeah, uh, suku, suku, paroh means that uh, the half is should be from vegetable and uh, in our plate, the half should be from the vegetable and fruit yeah? and the rest will be become a less portion. For example, for fat or uh, for protein, yeah, we need more vegetable and fruits in our meal. I hope it will be answered. Yeah. Find this case, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for Dr. Farida and Dr. Ramisa for the discussion. Uh, after this, we would like to invite uh, participants who want to. Uh, say or share their experience or maybe uh, share their knowledge or maybe uh, share their idea regarding today's topic. Is there any participants who want to share? Is there any participants who want to share? No, oh, I think no, doctor. So maybe we would like to ask uh, Dr. Farida and Dr. Amisa to give a closing statement. Maybe uh, Dr. Farida first, please. Closing okay. statement. Yeah. Um, um, first of all, I would like to thank to Dr. Zuhud and all the community teams here. Yeah, invite me for this uh, very interesting uh, program, summer school. Even though uh, maybe my topic is not too related with the uh, uh, crop sign or maybe the agriculture, but I hope uh, one day you can uh, apply yeah, uh, and also maybe uh, you can use uh, for your daily life. Yeah. So stay healthy, everyone, and, and all the best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, next to Doctor Ramisa, please. Okay. Thank you, uh, Doctor Zuhud. Okay, so just one last message yeah, to everyone, to the participants. Uh, so the, the sustainable agriculture is our our responsibility. Okay, we 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 need to think about our future generation. What happened to our children? Yeah, in the future. So uh, whatever we do, yeah. Uh, uh, in case you you are inventing the the, the, the agricultural sectors uh, in the future, hopefully you can think uh, 
what you need, yeah? uh, your, you meeting all your needs nowadays and you have to think about what you can, you can give to your future generation as well. The same thing with what you have now. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much. So okay. happy, yeah. happy uh, webinar for the rest <laughs> of the course. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Dr. Ramisa and Dr. Farida. Please give big applause for both. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, before I give back to the Master of Ceremony or MC, I would like to a uh, little bit summarize uh, today's speaker presentation about the sustainable agriculture. I think it is a good issue and need to be considered for all parties not only for uh, people who related to agriculture, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking that all parties need to think about this because uh, if we exploit the agriculture, the result will maybe will be not good in the future. Maybe good in uh, current time, but in the future, maybe there is some uh, destruction uh, as the side effect of the exploitation. And then for the food sensory and uh, consumer acceptability, I, I want to say that actually this topic is uh, close to agriculture, doctor. So please don't say it is not close because I, I, I think this is very close. And uh, for my field in agribusiness, this is a good idea to be at in uh, the questionnaire when we do uh, like the research about consumer preference, doctor. So maybe if uh, my students... Uh, uh, is there any student who want to study about consumer preference? Maybe I will suggest uh, him or her to uh, put some of your uh, materials, doctor. So I think this is uh, close to agribusiness and agriculture, doctor. Okay, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Amisa and Dr. Farida. Uh, I hope that this uh, silaturahmi, yes, this uh, connection, collaboration will not stop here so we hope that uh, we we still have another uh, collaboration okay that's all from me if i do mistake i'm uh, really sorry and then i will give back to the mc uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thanks to mr Jaki as a moderator and my friend has sent the link in the whatsapp group and the assessment can be filled until the next meeting, so please fill it on time. Choose the sequence of events of summer school 20, 2021 today. Hopefully, can give sight and benefit for all of us. And the discussion is very interesting. As the master of ceremony, I'm sorry if there are any mistakes. And the last for the participation of summer school 2021, please do the today assessment. Also, thank you for the for your participation and see you in the summer school event tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye bye, Dr. Amisa and Dr. Farida. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you all. Uh, all participants, I will close the meeting. Yeah. Take care. Take everyone. care, Bu. <laughs>